All right, so welcome to another episode of Dial It Up Fawaz. I have the crew, the incredible crew, our number one broker outside of, I mean, with all of Rocket Pro TPO. We have West Cap in the house. We have Danny, we have Eric, we have Amir, we have Marcus, John. We also have Austin, special guest, never been on the show before. So this is great. We have Albert, we have Julia. We're really excited to have you guys in. It's a little early for you guys. Yeah. It's 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, when I checked my Instagram this morning, you guys might have been out till about five or six. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks. It's only one o'clock. Yeah, just only one o'clock. Yeah. 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 Look, it, it's it's incredible to see what you guys have done in the last year and a half. I believe your first <coughs> funding as a company was back in May of last year, and um, to just watch the growth and watch the dynamics of of the office and what you guys are building and just to see you guys become this top five broker in the country is incredible. So we're excited to have you guys. Uh, we're gonna have a conversation today. We're just gonna talk about things like what's working, what's not working. We'll go to the group, feel free to chime in, feel free to add whatever you want, but this is more of a conversation uh, with, with this incredible group. So let's start. Uh, year and a half, Danny, Eric, year and a half. Uh, you guys are, I mean, when you look at the numbers, it's just, the numbers don't lie. Rashid Wallace used to say, the, num the ball don't lie and the numbers don't lie. You guys are doing great things. Tell me a little bit about just West Cap in general, like the dynamics of West Cap. How, wh what, what makes you guys different? I want to hear from John. And by the way, just so you guys know, we have our, th these folks are your VPs of sales. That's right. And, and John, we were, I was just asking you, I mean, you have 23, how many people report to you? 33. 33, 33. individuals, loan officers. Marcus, you're also uh, sales, right? 22, I think, right now. 22. I just started building a team, so I have one. Okay. <laughs> then, I love you you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. That's yes. why I think Julia. I'm about 12 to 14. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 20. I got 20, 20. producers. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys all have a lot of producers on your team. You're managing people. You're, you're in charge of production mm -hmm. and making sure that you deliver loans to the closing table. Um, why West Capital? Like, what makes you guys different? You know, it, it's a connectivity. Connectivity with, with uh, first of all, our, our people, our, our, our agents. Um, Danny, Eric, they're, they're, they're excellent communicators when it comes to uh, the process of, of doing a loan with, uh, when it comes to um, metrics and reporting, which is, you know, when you go to a traditional broker, it's like, hey, you're kind of, you know, you're left to the side, but um, they're great communicators to where we can, you know, kind of build each other and, and communicate all the, all of the uh, tools that we need to succeed. So I, I think a lot of it has to do with connectivity. Mm -hmm. So I, I um, came from retail, I think everybody has their, we have our own, you know, DNA, retail DNA. So my first brokerage I joined was um, C2, and I felt, I mean, super, you know, on a lonely island, no support. Um, luckily, I learned, you know, I'm a quick learner. But you know, one of the main reasons why I joined West Cap is for the support, you know, the marketing support, the business model, and the people, the communication. You know, we, I, I can talk to somebody, call somebody, and discuss, you know, what what they're doing, what's working, what's not. So. That was like one of the biggest reasons why I came over to West Cap. That's great. I want to piggyback off of that. Mm -hmm. I, I think, like, when someone asks, like, what's one word that you can describe West Capital Lending? And I, the, the thing that comes to mind is definitely collaboration. You know, to piggyback off what you're yeah. saying, as far as coming from a retail model, you know, over there we just really focus on origination, submissions, numbers, fluff. You know, you want to win the contest, want to win the award, yada yada. It wasn't really focused on fundings. So over there in that model, there wasn't really collaboration. No one wanted to really share what they were doing that was working. It's like the saying, a wizard doesn't share his best tricks. And um, I think West Capital is really big on collaborations, sharing what marketing pieces are working, what lenders are working. Obviously, Rockets are number one. And, um, and we definitely lean on you guys, and we appreciate the partnership. But just sharing what's working, sharing what's not working, and like you know, we just want to see each other win. We don't want to just exactly. You know, we yes. don't want to. We don't want to just be selfish and and just kind of keep all the good information for ourselves. But when you're having like an open, genuine conversation at Westcap, you're sharing all your tricks. You want to see each other win. We think of each other as family, and we want to push Absolutely. each other yeah. up. You know, yeah. 
And uh, that's something that I didn't have before. And I was in yep. the retail model for four or five years. And um, and in the broker world, I mean, that's like, that was like an anti, you, you're not supposed to right. share any secrets, yeah. any mm -hmm. source. I mean, you call a broker, what are you doing? They're, you know, they, they won't say anything or so, yeah. tell you something well, different. Lie, yeah. But here, <laughs> I mean, even signing up with our like lead generation, you know, accounts, even the AEs, when I say, oh, what's this, you know, the, you know, or I'll, I'll tell my, my people to like, call them to mirror my parameters. And she's like, or they're like, well, are you sure you, you want them copying your parameters? I'm like, yeah, just, it's everything, you know, share, share the wealth. So that's, that's a surprise. Awesome. So that's mm -hmm. very different than the old support, school retail, yeah, yeah, the old yeah, school broker sure. world. The support yeah. we get yeah. from Rocket. I actually mm -hmm. remember, Austin, the last time that we came here, you said, um, it just stuck with me, but you were just like, mm -hmm. think big, you know, this mm -hmm. is just a big opportunity and think big and tap into, you know, tap into it. And that's just the thing, you know, we have a team, we have a company where there's like full support, everybody's here to try to help each other level up. And um, that's just what we're doing, you know, I wanna, I wanna continue to grow my team as much as I can. Like I know I got Danny's full support, John and Eric's full support, and um, like just the sky's the limit. Like I feel like we're just getting started, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, I know that when things get tough, you know, the cream rises to the top. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the you know everybody gets weeded out, and this is exactly when we gotta we gotta put the you know push the push the pedal down and go hard. So you know, I love how ever so you talked about the visibility around the mm -hmm. metrics and data. Mm -hmm. It's like the foundation. You talked about the availability of leadership. These guys are awesome. You talked about the collaboration with the team, which is incredibly important. And then thinking big together yeah. is yep. how you, how you kind of end it, which is awesome. Yeah. Different perspective from everyone. Yeah. And one thing that I really love mm -hmm. is, you know, Al is one of our mm -hmm. biggest producers, and he yet, I mean, he's he shares all of his knowledge. I remember he used to like, he used to send me all your like call record, like your mm -hmm. voice recordings, your phone recordings. Yeah. I mean, that's like golden, right? Yeah. I mean, who does that? I don't think any broker would do that. Like, ask any outside broker, hey, yeah. can you share your call like, <laughs> yeah. videos? It's, you know, it's call like recordings it's, it's just it's all giving I mean, it's, it's all yeah. It's, every, yeah. it's like a family. It's like yeah. you know, family over everything. It's you know so what I mean? That's important. like one of our that's like one of our um, one of the things that my personal team stands for. You know, and the thing is, you know, family over everything. We're all we're all independent, but we're all here to win. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like you know what you give. You know, it's, I, I want to give as much as I can because I know it's coming back. You know, so yeah, it's very selfless. <laughs> very selfless. It's always about giving. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. even Rocket. I mean, you very selfless. Which again, sharing, giving, collaborating. It's just just giving so that we can all win yeah. together. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Danny, I've heard you say this twice now. You talk about not being, you don't want it to feel like you're being in a call center. Although, I mean, you guys are huge. I feel like it is kind of a call center, but you kept, it's the second time I hear you saying that. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that? What do you mean by it? Well, I think for a lot of us, you know, we, we worked at different call centers, and I think that there was, there was great things that we loved about, you know, we, we did this fun Instagram reel the other day, and we were just talking about it. Like, there's great things that, and great environments within the call center, but then there was things that we just disliked about it. And I think that um, West Capital is, you know, that's that's kind of our mantra is like, you know, let's take everything that great about the call centers, right? Reverse engineering numbers and metrics and understanding what we need to do, what the play, executing as a team, collaborating, um, sharing information, but then stripping all the things that we didn't like about those environments, right? Forced metrics. Um, not feeling like you were appreciated, not feeling like you were um, valued, right? And in a certain way, it was just m numbers and metrics and just kind of being in this washing machine where every single day was the same type of thing. I think that's, what, that's what's different about, I think, just being a broker in general, right? Product diversity, flexibility around your time, right? Like Eric has three kids, I have three kids, right? We value, you know, the relationships with our people, we value the relationships with family, and we're gonna run and gun hard and build the company and and do everything we can. But like when it's time to slow down or when it's time to, you know, we can do that. We have the flexibility, and I, I personally didn't feel like I always had that in the call center. You could earn your freedom here. Yeah. yeah opportunity or, or freedom, and I feel like you take advantage of the opportunity. You earn your freedom here, you know. So That's versus right. scheduling your freedom on the weekends in a retail shop. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, um, 
your first time on the show. Yeah, thank you. I'm on a co-host. I've been waiting. <laughs> 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 he's yeah. Hey, he's too busy. He keeps doing all these podcasts outside of these walls, so it's okay. Not true. But anyway, so <laughs> we're going to co-host this thing together. Okay. I mean, you're close to this group as well. Yeah. And I'm sure you have some questions on your mind. Yeah. I didn't prep you for it. So uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. I mean, wh what do you guys, there's a lot of things you can focus on, especially in this market as a LO or even, you know, running a team or being a broker owner, what do you guys believe the number one skill that folks watching this, listening to this should be focused on in this market? I would say, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say in, in terms of being a leader, uh, influence. Yeah. Like how you're telling that story about, you know, your, your dad. Um, I, I just feel like the thing is, there's like a fine line between trying to because we're all independent. You know, they don't, they don't, they're not, they don't have to listen to us. The team doesn't have to listen to us. So it's just how can you get people to basically believe in themselves and put forth, you know, maximum effort without uh, almost like micromanaging them in a sense. You know, how can you influence them to move and you know work? You know, when they don't have to, when they don't have to listen to you. So I just think like really tapping into being influential. Is a is a is a is a very very important skill right now. Yeah, consistency I think is also yeah. really important. A lot of people with the way the market's going get discouraged, and so it's easy to kind of start caring about your job and then easily give up just simply because it's tough, or you've heard too many no's, or the rates are too high, or the market just got worse, right? But having that consistency day in day out, showing up, not just coming to your office, but showing up, right, and like putting forth the effort. I think that's a really, really key component of like making a good team or just as a producer yourself uh, in any, any, any viewpoint of that, I'd say consistency for sure. Love as well. Yeah. I would say perspective, like what you mentioned in your keynote today. I mean, how you view this market is ultimately going to determine your destiny. A lot of people right now are just going to take their you know, foot off of the pedal, enjoy the holidays, you know, restart next year with a New Year's resolution. I'll start marketing, then I'll start working, then I'll start building a team then. But... If you do that, I mean, if you just or if you just listen to the news and you listen to the people that puke negativity, it's just going to indulge your life. You're not going to work. You're not going to grind. You're not going to make money. You're not going to be <coughs> successful. And anyone that you help in today's market, whether purchase or refi or home equity product, it will end up being two or three deals in the future, Absolutely. no matter what. Because right. the people the people that you'll help right now, they'll end up being a lifelong client. Yeah. If you help hold their hand and guide them during one of the harsher markets that we've been in, especially coming off of a COVID year or COVID rate, I would say. Um, you know, that, that's going to be your client for life, I think. If you do the right Spot job. Spot on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love you mentioned the word no. And I think that, you know, over the last couple of years, loan originators haven't heard the word no a lot. You know, we can take someone from a five to a two or a four to a 199 at one point. It's hard to say no as a consumer. We, we can't forget that our job as a salesperson, it, it starts when you hear the word no. Our job is to turn no's into yeses, into influence. And that's where we need to get excited about the no. That's where you, that's where you build your career. And influence, persuasion, understanding how to overcome an objection, whether it's from a client, an agent, if you're recruiting an LO, the no is where the, where the work begins. And you shouldn't get discouraged, you should get excited. That's when you know, that's when my job begins, yeah. is the no. Yeah. 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 I think leading with empathy before be, you know, positioning yourself as an expert is important, what, from leadership down to sales and working with your customer. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care, is the saying, right? Yeah. So I think you have to establish the relationship, more now than ever, right? Establishing the relationship and connecting on a personal level first before trying to spew your, you know, agenda or whatever you're trying to push um, is important more now than ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, look, I mean, we all know where the market is at. I mean, if you just, in the last 24 hours, the market changed a lot. I believe where we at now we're seeing seven. Stop looking at seven it. Seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. Don't I'll talk about it. it. Don't talk about it. I have to look at it. We all have to look at it. But uh, I continue to see you guys grow. Every time I talk to you guys, uh, we're onboarding. We have an onboarding class. Uh, I believe now you're onboarding like once a month or biweekly. Uh, you continue to bring on hellos. Uh, every time I call you guys, you're like just walking out of like a collaboration meeting. I wrote down the word collaboration you guys talk about, it, but you're always meeting with VPs. You guys are continuing to grow uh, at a very, very uh, high high pace, like fast pace. Tell me a little bit about that. You see a lot of people slowing down. 
and a lot of folks are pulling back, but you guys continue with the mindset of growing and bringing on more LOs. Why is that? Uh, and 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 like, what's the what's the end goal? Like, what are we looking at? Like, how many LOs, by the way, you're at right now? Let's start with that. We're at three ten sponsored. 310. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. awesome. <coughs> And you continue on yeah. a bi-weekly basis? Yeah. Give us a little bit about that, Eric. Yeah, I mean, I think it continues to snowball as we refer our friends and our friends refer their friends, and it's just word of mouth. You know, it's been a completely organic growth. We have never invested in, like, a recruiter. Um, you know, we've never Amazing. posted a job. It's contagious. Uh, a, a job yeah. posting contagious. for loan officers. Um, yeah, it's just that pe- the, word, the word spreads from word of mouth, you know. and. We invest a lot into our, um, you know, our group, the VP team especially, right, into the culture. We take a lot of trips together, we do a lot of fun events, meet twice a week, and I think it goes a long way. You know, it keeps us as a tight-knit group, constantly collaborating and sharing together. How many VPs do you guys have right now? 25. Wow, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Just to touch on kind of the same thing, like, Austin brought this up, right? You look at the graph of what Rocket has done, right? You know, you see it's success is not just a, just a one shot, you know, straight to the moon. It's, you know, you, it's these different experiences and these hiccups in the market that, that, you know, you fumble, you start to figure things out and then you, you go up from there. And so like, you know, like you brought it up on the screen, right? 2008, right? It's like a badge of honor if you went through 2008. It was just interesting because I just think back on my career right and going through 2008 and going and experiencing this down market but then realizing and learning from it and getting better and then taking off from there so I think that you know this year is going to be that that next challenge right figuring out how to you know overcome all the challenges this year and then where we're going to go from there but yeah I'm excited for you look yeah. forward to it yeah <laughs> yeah I look at you know Building a career, you can do it one of two ways. One, looking at it like you're a trader, like a, you're trading stocks. And one way, looking at it like an investor. There's two different ways. You're an investor or you're a trader. And I think if you were to look at like the S&P 500, we're talking about numbers, and you were to stare at like the last six months, it would look like a terrible investment. <laughs> you say, let me get my money out. Let me go do something differently. But if you were to look at the S&P 500 over two years, 10 years, 30 years, you'd say, my God, that is the best investment I could ever make, or one of the best investments. It's the same thing with this. I mean, if you stared at the market right now over the last six months, like a lot of people are doing, you'd say, my goodness, should I get out? Is this the right thing? Mm -hmm. But if you're to look at the market over time and understand we're in the most beautiful industry, in my opinion, you can be in in America, which is the home mortgage industry, what an incredible investment. And by the way, if you're an investor, you double down when the market's down. Absolutely. And you go in and you yeah. and we put more energy, time, effort into it. I think that's the way you gotta look at it. Yeah. I think Absolutely. So. It is definitely an opportunity, huge opportunity. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think enough people are prepared to embrace like opposition, you know, like and that's what's really important. And I think everyone at Westcap, a lot of the people we work with are. No one's like scared or tucking mm-hmm. their tail. Everyone's like doubling down. Yeah. And we're all here together. So, you know, independent but together, you know, so that's I think it's a beautiful thing, honestly. Yeah. It's beautiful because in this time of, uh, this tumultuous time, the communication's there. Passion, we, we love what we do. We love our people. We love our, our our loan officers. We love our people that we help. So I think in, in the midst of all of this, it's just a matter of being connected and together I, and that's what I love about West Capital and and Rocket. I mean, we I you know, I feel connected with with Rocket with you guys. So it, it's great to have that support especially during this difficult time. I mean, we've been through difficult times, Danny, Eric and but and this and this is different. This is better. This is I mean, I'm not alone, you know? Yeah. Having a partner like you guys has helped us scale our business massively. Like yeah. You know, for the, sure. the support from day one has been huge for us to be able to scale the business the way that we have. Um, it's much easier to train people to use Rocket than to be a broker, right? Yeah. So that's the first yeah. step when people yeah. join our company. It's, you know, Mark Mole is in there doing a training, uh-huh. our AE, in front of uh, our in every onboarding on orientation class that we put together <laughs> because the first thing we tell them is, you know, start small and then expand your, you know, arsenal with the different lenders and different products. But 
before you can take on the world, you have to be able to master just working with basic like eight paper loans, right? Yeah. And so that's what we would preach from day one. Yeah. And then actually, you know, bringing out home equity loans and all these different <coughs> products, that's gonna help us, you know, in a big way. That part, that is more needed now than ever. And we're excited, like Super rolling excited. that out, yeah. rolling core <laughs> out, right? Um, the assisted core, I should say, yeah. right? These, these initiatives, yeah. it's very helpful for us to be able to stay around in challenging markets like this. Good. I have a question for for you guys, and then I also I want to ask the same question for to Austin as well. But we'll start with you guys. Look, uh, from a broker standpoint, from an LO standpoint, will be the last question about the market. I promise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you guys seeing out there? Like, where, where are you finding success? What are some of the things that you're seeing out there that maybe you give a tip to the folks that are listening? Like things that you guys are focused on that's helping you be successful and continue to do business in this market? Sure, I, I think I can answer that. I, I honestly feel like this market's not that bad. Okay. Like, I just think, um, I, I've, I've experienced a bad market where rates were high and there was no equity. People have equity. People have, there's like tons of opportunity. So, honestly, I just kind of preach to my team business as usual, you know, like, <coughs> spend your money, market, work hard, you know, and engage in, you know, marketing activity and, and whatnot, and the results will come. So in my opinion, I don't think this market's that hard. People have equity, so there's plenty of opportunity. I love how you, you're looking at this. I love that. Perspective, yeah. and right? It's true. Perspective, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. You know, this isn't just fluff. I yeah. mean, yeah. Al funded 18 loans last month, right? Personally. And mm -hmm. just personally. And still leading a team. And still leading a team, right? And, and in, loans. That's right. And invested in, yeah. you know, just doubling down on. 27 loans submitted in July. Reached out to Alex because he was kind of I was kind of picking up what he was putting down, the trainer Shafferdine. and uh, Shafferdine, yeah. And uh, we had 82 submissions in in August, so 4x improvement on that production yeah. in one month. Yeah, incredible. And a lot of it had to do with just influence, you know, just everything that you were you were saying in your keynotes. That's why I was it was like resonating with me and kind of reinforced what what it is. You know, it's yeah. just like very. What about you, example? Yeah, like you yeah I, I was going to say, kind of leading back to the question, um, I think definitely the people that need help right now. I, I think that COVID is going to have, unfortunately, a, a long-lasting effect. So many people are, are very heavy in debt, low FICO scores. They really need help. They can't get conventional financing. And that's where we come in. And, and I think that we really have to put the pencil to paper and find a way to help them. And sometimes it's not through Rocket. It's going to be through a different investor. But it's just doing max debt consolidation, helping pull them out of a hole, improve their FICO score, using their equity like Al said. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I'm facing a lot. You know, it's just, you know, 2020, 21. Everyone did the two and a half, two point seven five thirty year fixed rate and term PIW. You know, now you can't really help them out of it. I mean, they're, they're in a good position. They have a low monthly payment, but the people that really need the help right now are the ones that are buried in debt. They have equity, and we need to help find a solution for them and help them tap into that equity. That's what I'm coming across. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're very excited for the HE loan to come out as well. Just, but as I mentioned, the people that are in the twos and you know they don't want to touch their first mortgage, HE loan will come in and help them out significantly. Um, and that's what we're excited for. It's great. For sure. I think just, you know, for people listening, right, I think it's relentless follow-up and contact, right? And, like, for what what's working with us as a group, right, is, has been working aggregate leads, right? And figuring out ways to get these deals to convert. But it's I, I feel like it's the relentless follow-up. It's a contact sport. It's making sure that you're building the relationship with these people. You know, when someone here is a 65 and a 7% with... 10 grand in fees, right? That's not something that's just flying off the, you know, that they're ready to do the deal, right? But it's understanding their situation. Do they have kids? Do they have what debt? How much do they have in 401k? I mean, some of the basic principles that I've learned from working at Rocket Retail, from working at, you know, various companies, right? Just, you gotta, you gotta paint the picture. You gotta understand exactly their entire financial situation so that you know, you can analyze it, and then you can then go. Those are your those are your sales points. Like, yeah. look, let's put money back into your four hundred one k. Like, <clears throat> so I think uh, relentless follow up. It's you know the one call close, the the, the deal that is just going to fall in your lap, right? The two seven five piw like that that doesn't exist, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I I can equate. I remember some situations where it took me six months to close the deal, right? I pitched them six months ago and then followed up yeah. every single month, right, touching base with them, and they would hear from me. They would get my emails. They would get 
the follow up, right? And then, you know, you finally get that deal to turn. But then that one deal, now, you know, you get multiple referrals. So I think um, that's one of the most important things is relentless follow up. Yeah. Yeah. Fo yeah. Follow up with understanding the fact you followed up because you realize that your client had a need. Yeah. We have to understand just being understanding of our clients needs. They, they sometimes don't know they're just thinking of rates. But if we really slow down, dig in, yeah. dig in, dig have a great conversation yeah. with them in regards to, hey, what, how's life treating you? All these things uh, deep inside, we can really understand, hey, they need something. Yeah. They need our help. Yeah. I saw a quote. I don't know who had it up there. It was something about Muhammad Ali. Someone asked him, how many sit-ups can you do? He says, I don't know. I don't start counting until it starts to hurt because mm -hmm. that's when the work begins. And I think it's the same thing with uh, follow-up and hearing no. Like our job as <coughs> LOs, it doesn't start until you hear no. It really doesn't because um, that's when the work begins. And it's the follow-up and relentlessly understanding why and then going even deeper on the client situation and understanding you might have to do 100 sit-ups until it hurts and you're done. You might have to follow up 100 times until it's done. That's when the work begins. Yeah. 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 The order taking days are over. You know. <laughs> 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 the the you know, slam dunk days are over. So yep. to piggyback off of what John said, I said I think that this is the market to be a consultant, you know, mm -hmm. yep. and to dig deep and you really have to slow down with your clients and you have to, you know, just, just help them find a plan. Yeah. And um, plan out the next two, three, five, ten years. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that's where you're going to find a success and you're going to find a very long-term client. Yeah. yeah. I think that's very important. Yeah. In, in order to succeed long-term, you got to think long-term. You mm -hmm. can't think short-term. If you have someone in front of you that don't qualify or that they don't have a need and you know that this is not a good loan for them, don't pitch them. Mm -hmm. instead, of, yeah. instead of pitching them, give them the, the advice and let them know that, hey, they're in a good spot so you can get that referral a couple of years later. Yeah. That's that's a big deal. I love how you talked about like, hey, making sure that you're educating people and you're really going, uh, digging deep into their business. Because look, a couple of years ago, I mean, last two years, you weren't educating anyone. You were giving them 2% and 20% and you're moving on. Oh, yeah, no. it didn't, like, it, it all yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah, you're saving $1,000 a month, good, it's done. Now it's not like that. But to his point, to Albert's point, there's equity. There's so yeah. much need that you can take advantage of what you have as long as you're educating your clients. I love that. And without getting uh, too granular, I remember Al and I, when we worked in retail together too, there was a loan that we would do frequently that I learned from him, uh, and it was just what we called a Band-Aid loan. So it's clients, we'd always use the line, don't let perfection get in the way of improvement. Because a lot of people would see, you know, like a high interest rate, oh, I don't want to do that, but they have... 50,000, 75,000 in credit card debt, they have student loans, they have you know, past due collections, their credit score is too low, and it's like, it gets in the way of them making an improvement. You know, they, So it's like, also getting someone to like shift their mindset yeah. into, I need to improve my situation. Like that perfect loan's not gonna come because you're not the perfect client. So let's get you to yeah. be the perfect client. Yeah, yeah not yet, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But the, 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 it's a Band-Aid loan because yeah. we're gonna we're gonna heal this wound now. But when you're in a better position, you know, you're more well qualified exactly. for a better loan. That's mm -hmm. when I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do your loan again, and it, at no cost, or I'll do it in mm -hmm. under two weeks, or I'll, you know. Yeah, a lot of what we do right now is just analyzing their situation, asking the right questions, and just kind of like diagnosing their situation and giving them the best solution mm -hmm. for whatever their situation is. It's just that, you know, just having a conversation. Spot on. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the biggest questions, Fawaz, I'm getting, and you're seeing it in broker forums and social, especially over the last month, is, you know, what's going on with all the lenders out there? Um, you're seeing, you know, Loan Depot get out of wholesale. You're seeing Amerisafe get out of wholesale. You're seeing people shrink by 80%. And the advice I could give brokers watching this is always remember you're the boss. We work for you. You're in charge. That's the beauty of the broker model. And the second brokers forget that, things become dangerous. You're seeing something pretty interesting going on right now, and a lot of brokers are waking up to it. Um, you know, there's Matt Ishbia that, in my opinion, is systematically destroying the broker model, or at least attempting to. And you look at what happened a year and a half ago, and that's when you guys started. Um, a year and a half ago, he did something no one ever imagined, which is say, I'm gonna sue brokers if they use Rocket. And we're the second largest outlet for mortgage brokers, which is a big deal. And then say, I'm gonna sue you $50,000 if you use Fairway, which was a top 10 <coughs> uh, lender. 
And then recently he came out and said, hey, it's game on. I'm going to use this time to drive out competition. Well, brokers realize, oh, shit, he's driving out all my options. And that's when you saw Home Depot back away, Amerisafe back away, and others back away. And so I think that brokers are waking up to the fact that all of my lending options is my superpower. It's the oxygen that keeps the broker community alive Absolutely. in driving people out and suing people and whittling this thing away to where it's just one lender is the worst possible thing that yeah. can happen to the broker community. Ultimately, so one individual can gain control, ultimately take, I mean, even in you know earnings calls saying, hey, I could go buy a company or I could go reduce price and buy market share from brokers and drive out their lenders and then raise margin. I mean, it's, it's pretty evident what's going on. So what I would say is, um, never forget brokers are the ones calling the shots. We work for you, you run the show and uh, press us and never never forget that optionality and choice is your is your superpower. And you know we support that. We let you guys know every day we gotta earn your business the right way. And if we're not, if we're not doing the right thing, let us know and you gotta take your business somewhere else, but we'll continue to raise the bar and earn it versus demand. As soon as we, uh, as one company monopolizes the broker industry, right, we're gonna be, we lose that superpower completely. So, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what we believe in and stand for. Yeah. Competition is healthy. It's a beautiful right? thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That was the premise of this of, yeah. our, of the company, right? That's yeah. what led us to to yeah. create this company was, you know, understanding the power of choice and yeah. knowing that that was a necessity. So what's powerful is you guys during that whole nonsense of you got to pick a side. <clears throat> you guys decided to to step away and and choose choice, and you guys have soared. Or the other company you guys left. It, I, I mean, you guys are now two times their size, which is impressive from what you guys have done and decided. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, what are you seeing from a lender standpoint? But I do think you touched on it, uh, and, and I love that. Um, it is true. I mean, when you think about it, I wrote down, as you were saying, Matt is systematically destroying the broker model, which is true, by the way, two, three lines under that. Uh, broker <laughs> superpower. Broker superpower is freedom. It's the ability to go wherever you want. You have hundreds of doors, and you can knock on every one of them and shop into every one of those stores that make your decision. But when you watch one person celebrate all these doors being shut down, celebrate Home uh, Loan Depot getting out of business and Amerisave, that they become the only door available, that's a bad, that's a bad spot. That's a bad shop to walk in because you're going to be stuck with higher prices, bad customer service, yeah. and someone is going to monopolize and control the broker community. And you're already seeing it. I mean, the whole game on thing's over. Well, it's yeah. game over, and you're seeing their price go mm -hmm. way up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. it's exa I mean, he, he said he was going to do it. I'm going to drive out options, then I'm going to raise my price. He drove out options, now he's raising his price. The good news is we're going nowhere, mm -hmm. and we're going to continue to build and build and build for all of you, and um, we're going we're gonna to be able to build a beautiful platform for you guys to continue to pe compete and win business. So, For sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, look, uh, I wrote down five words. I want to touch on those. We'll end with this. I, wrote, I heard from you guys communication, support, collaboration, thinking big, and culture. And, um, and it is very evident when I watch this group operate and I continue to get close to this group and see how you guys do things on a daily basis. And it's not just you guys, by the way, in this room. I mean, we talk to your LOs and they're, they're also speaking about some of these things. It, it, it is very evident that you guys are building something very, very, very special. And uh, we're really excited. I mean, we're just getting started. A year and a half is nothing. Uh, this is just getting started, and we're really, really excited to continue to grow with you guys. I'd love to open it to a group. If you have, you have anything you want to say to end this with, I mean, the floor is yours. But from us, from Rock Pro TPO, we appreciate you guys. We're very excited for you guys, and uh, we look forward for the next 10, 15 years as we continue yeah. to grow together. You know, I got to say, all those words you wrote, it's in alignment with Rocket, and we're. It, we have we're we're appreciative of all that because you believe in the same things that we believe in all those things you wrote five words down yeah can you just can you just yep. communication support collaboration thinking big and culture we're doing that with you and we appreciate yeah. it
Mm-hmm. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Absolutely. I just want to add that I just remember when 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 you guys first started and I was in that little room with you guys yeah. <laughs> and um, they were just kind of talking about just you know the commissions and yada 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 yeah. but what I really what really stuck with me was the first one in last one out you know you're 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 a co-owner of the company and your first one in last one out and that's it's just he was just leading by example you know and you know I try to echo that same sentiment with my team you know I'm like whatever I'm going to ask you guys to do I'm going to do myself I'm going to try to do it better just so you know that it can be done and um, I just want to say that you know I'm just grateful for the opportunity just like Pua said we're just getting started like this is just the tip of the iceberg um, and I just think like I think we're going to do some great things that, that that's mm-hmm. even bigger than what we can even imagine you know so just like you said think big you know I'm going to continue to think big and I'm going to continue to you know press as hard as I can and you know I'm just excited to be part of the team that's awesome great yep Austin, the final yeah, word is yours. What you guys have done, we were talking about this before the before the show began. Yeah. I mean, we work with a lot of great brokers, um, and everyone's different. Watching you decide to go out on your own a year and a half ago, and then look at where you're at today, which is from zero loans closed and just an idea, to a top five broker in America in a year and a half. I mean, it's awesome. It's incredible. I'm proud of you guys, and just incredibly proud to be a, a partner of yours. So. And like you said, it feels like you're only getting started. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. We're excited for the next 48 hours. Uh, we're going to go back to all access. I know you guys, I mean, by the way, you guys have 50 LOs in Detroit with all access right now. Joined us for our event. We appreciate it. Uh, we're going to go learn together. We're going to get better together. We're going to show a little bit about our culture and who we are. But at the end of the day, we are nothing without you guys. And we understand that. And we know more than anyone. And I promise you that we understand that we need to compete every single day for your business. And we're going to continue to do so. And we're going to continue to get better. And feedback is a gift. So please let us know what we can do to, to get better at. But again, we are nothing without you guys. Thank you. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Appreciate you.